point something, you want to make sure there's no wrinkles. Wrinkles cause pressure points. Pressure points cause ulcers. So you want to make sure that whatever you're using can contour the body part that you're trying to wrap. Make sense? Okay. So six inch, like I said, <coughs> usually if it's for a femur or something like that, um, you can use it. Otherwise, it's even the shell. Uh, four inch is good for angles. Um, if it's a small person, three inch. It's always easier to do something small and just use a little bit more of it than it is to use something too big and then have to pull corners off and edges and so on and so forth. So, you guys hear us, if you guys ask us which you want on the, an ankle or something like that, we always say like an AO splint. Does everybody know what that is? Mm -hmm. no. And then there's several different kinds What's of that? So if you ask all the different electro residents what AO splint is, you probably get some different answers. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Everybody has their preference. What it's meant to do is keep the foot at a neutral position and support it so that the muscles and soft tissues can relax. And then keep the, foot. the pitfalls of the splint, like I said, too much pressure, um, not enough padding, and too much padding. The time you have too much padding is if you're doing a reduction, which I don't think you guys are going to be doing. So basically, all your splints are going to be to support but not to hold something in place. So you cannot really have too much padding on the support slint. Better too much than too little. Alright. So we'll do Mr. Dr. Blaylock. So we like to use the five by thirties on these ankle splints. Yeah. And also uh, sorry. Go ahead. Orthoglass. Don't use it. The only time you should use orthoglass is if you're doing a one-sided splint. So, if you're doing like a bowler splint uh, for somebody who has just like a little torus fracture or something like that, just something that needs to be on one side, you can use orthoglass. If you have to wrap it around something or if you wrap around an ankle, it's fiberglass, and when fiberglass dries, it constricts, uh, and it, I mean, it doesn't give. Plaster will give a little bit. Very nice. So. Um, stay away from orthoglass. If it's going to be something you're going to splint and send, say, to, Mer to Children's Mercy or something like that, and you can get away with doing it for either just a couple hours or just on one side, then you can use orthoglass. Otherwise, just stay away from it. Questions? Yeah. So important. We, use, uh, we use eight thickness on one and seven on the other just because, you know, they're five each, so we just take two and three and add it to one, one of the five ones. And then for the foot plate, just one of the ones folded over like that, and then you can just tear it off where you need to for the foot. <laughs> so, I always joke and say that if I mess up a splint, it's because of the holder, and that's part joking, and that's part real. <laughs> so, if you have somebody with... Um, <coughs> fracture, so mid shaft on the tibia or something like that, or even if it's an ankle fracture, if you just kind of try and pick them up like this, it's going to cause them a lot of pain. You're not you're not going to hold it very long. You're going to be in the splinter's way. So you always have the patient kind of scoot over to the edge of the bed as much as they can, or if they're out, you can scoot them over, and then get the bed height to somewhere where your holder can hold it for a while. And I always thought that you're supposed to ski on the patient. And what I mean by that is just kind of get under them and then just lean back and use your body weight to hold their leg. So I could just sit here like this all day and all I have to really worry about is this. So get one arm underneath there and you can just kind of hold them like this. And put your hand on their toes and you can hold them like this. And then you can just kind of pull your whole arm and you're not just kind of trying to pinch them there. You can hold them back, you can hold them back to 90 degrees, which is very important. If you let them go like this and they're in this for two weeks, they're going to get a contracture. And then we have to fight with them in physical therapy. So get them 90 degrees at their knee, 90 degrees at their ankle, okay, and hold them there. And it's, you just stay here if you're holding. If you don't move for, this, for the splinter, they're going to splint around you. And I'll show you that in, by that in just a second. So the holder gets them right here. You hold it the other way. That's how that kind of 
that 90 degrees is also really important because if um, you hold their foot plantar flex and then when I take it from you at the end, I put that foot in my chest like you've all seen us do, we push all that soft roll up and it bunches up right here in the front of their ankle and you take that down and they've got a big yep. pressure sore right in the front of their ankle because it causes a yep. bunch. So you want to be putting that soft roll on in the same position that you're going to split. Kind of the same thing applies when you're when you're putting your plaster on. As far as it's easier to, to get a little bit less plaster than it is to have too much. So five by thirties, you could put on a lot of people. I think Daryl's kind of on the limit here where you could even tear your five by thirties and make it four inch or use four four inch uh, plaster to begin with. Which I will do. He's got not small feet, they're floating in. So I'm just going to take my 5x30 here and trim it up a little bit. And the point of having a splint is to have it open. A cast being circumferential, everything's closed. A splint being open on a few sides to allow for swelling. can't say it enough, the goal of splinting is to have no wrinkles, and that means the plaster and a soft roll. Alright boss. So for him, I'd actually start out with a 3 instead of a 4, which some do and some don't, so good he's holding them pretty well there. And he's going to stay right here, I'm going to wrap around his hand, and his hand does a couple of things. It lets me wrap around his toes, and it also lets there be space in there afterwards because when he takes his hand out his toes aren't going to be all bunched up from me wrapping it too tight. So I start way up here further than the toes and I'm pulling a little bit on this soft roll. You can see when I pull it kind of thins out a little bit and we can keep wrinkles down that way. And then when I get here to the ball of the foot I'm going to do this a couple of times. So any place that you have natural pressure points I always try to put at least four layers on. And down here around the ankle. And you can see on the front here, we're keeping it with no wrinkles. And then when you get to the heel, this is always a hard part. So you don't have to get all the skin covered on the first time around. You need at you least to two layers of soft roll of plaster to keep the patient from getting burned. Yeah, so you need at, at least. least two layers. And like I said, always err for these splints that, are, splints that are just for support. Always err on the side of too much. Soft roll too little. Overlapping by about 50%. All the way. And then once I get my kind of basic uh, wrap there, then you can kind of upsize a little bit and use a four inch. And try and cover a little bit more ground here. And always pad the Achilles really well. Don't be afraid to stop and pull this off. And then you can come back and wrap the heel. You've got to pay a lot of attention to it. What I always do is I kind of hold on one side and pull like that. And it kind of self-contours. I just give it a couple, a couple layers here. And I try and stay off the front of the ankle and not pat it too terribly much. For the reason that Scott spoke about earlier. If you have any of these whiskey things, you can just pull them off. Throw them on the floor for the nurses to clean up later. <laughs> Thanks. I love that. Appreciate that. So now, all the bony prominences are padded really well, and you can kind of go back around and clean it up and make it all pretty. I like that. that. Kind of the same thing when you get to the top where the plaster is going to end. You want to make sure you have lots of padding up here because that's going to be kind of one of the pressure points too. I always do four, five, six rolls up top. And then just come back down and kind of clean everything up a little bit.
me start with our AO wrapping. And for legs, it's, you don't have to measure too awful much. These 15 by 30s are generally just about what you need. So we do uh, 8 and 7, or 8 and 8, whatever. Um, I think Tilly says if you do like anything more than 18 or something like that, layers, it's going to burn the patient unless you haven't had it. It's got the same 10, so 20 altogether. Yeah. So 18, 20, whatever. So, but you shouldn't need more than definitely eight or nine layers on any particular slab you're putting down. So we get it nice and wet here. You want to make sure that the water is not too hot with plaster. It's an exothermic reaction. So if you have hot water plus exothermic reaction, it's going to burn the patient. So just warm. Just it, barely it's warm. It's too cold. It'll take forever. It'll take forever, but okay. always air on too cold. Tepid. So the hotter the water, the hotter the water. <laughs> the hotter the water it, dry, it dries faster. So if you're trying to mold it or something like that, it's going to, you're going to be racing the clock. What I'm doing here is annealing. You have to get all these layers together. If you don't, it'll break down quicker. So if you do this, it gets all the layers together. And then always stop your plaster short of your soft roll. So you'll see what I'm saying on the other side. But and make sure you get the malleolus underneath the heel and back up. And if you've got enough moisture left in here, your holder shouldn't need to hold onto the plaster. It'll stick to the soft roll. squeeze all the water out. What I'm doing now is basically just trying to anneal a little bit more. I'm not trying to squeeze all the water out. Alright, stopping short of my soft roll. The other thing that's really important on, the, on this outside one is the head of his fibula is right here. And you want to stop short of that. If you get too high, if you get within you know, if you're right at the head of the fibula, the superficial perineal nerve, you know, that goes down to the foot, comes around right here. And so you can give them a nerve palsy if you put that outside one too high. So you just want to feel the head of the fibula and then go down a little bit. Some people have really long legs, so it won't be an issue. And then we do soft roll over uh, to keep the ace bandage from sticking, and it's just, it just makes it a little bit prettier. And it also helps hold this on while you're getting this all together. Stop short there, and then it's time to put the foot plate on. And what I do with the foot plate, everybody does a little bit different. So I do several layers of four inch or whatever, just to make sure it's all covered. Drape that over the holder's hand there. Alright, so our splint's basically done, and the last thing is, of course, the ace can ditch. Yeah, actually, and for these angles, we like to use these zimmers, and we should maybe start stopping these in the ER. Just because they'll make it top to bottom, the other six inch won't make it top to bottom. Um, and it's, this is a nice way to do this. And ace bandages always go from distal to proximal. If you go proximal to distal, and it's too tight, you just create a tourniquet. Okay. So, for this, just to hold it in place, one very loose wrap around the ankle, and this is just technique. And then the next one comes around the heel, up around the holder, and I'm not stretching it very hard, and then back around. And we can go over that again. And then you just take it up. And I'm not pulling tight, I'm not stretching the ace bandage, 
I'm just laying it on top. This is just to cover up the soft roll. It's not to hold anything in place. The plaster is going to hold itself in place. Goody get his hand out of there, and I'll take it over, okay? And the point here is to keep him at 90 degrees. He hasn't flexed his foot down, it's going to wrinkle your plaster. And you can feel here he doesn't have any wrinkles in his plaster. We know the soft roll's good. So now it's all beautification. All right. So down here at the toes, he's got his foot plate there. I want to make sure that that plaster's not wrapped around his toes. I'm going to wrap the ace bandage around. And make sure a soft roll is kind of constricting so you can stick your fingers in there and pull it apart. You can see all his toes, you can see all his toes. You can step in, there's no piggies missing, so we can make sure that they're all intact and their sensation's good.